Hey everyone. Welcome back to the Science Enigma. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of physics to explore a mind-boggling question. Does time stop at absolute zero? It's a concept that takes us to the extremes of temperature and the very fabric of our reality. But before we unravel this mystery, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss out on our explorations of the universe. Let's get started. First things first, let's grasp the basics. What is absolute zero? It's the lowest possible temperature, where particles of matter have minimal motion. It's a chilly minus 273.15 degrees Celsius or minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. But what happens to time at this mind-numbing temperature? To answer this question, we need to delve into the concept of time dilation, a fascinating phenomenon predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. In extreme conditions, such as near-massive objects or at high speeds, time can behave in ways that challenge our everyday intuition. It fundamentally challenges our common-sense understanding of time as an absolute and constant entity. There are two main forms of time dilation, gravitational time dilation and velocity time dilation. Gravitational Time Dilation According to general relativity, the presence of mass or energy warps the fabric of space-time. The stronger the gravitational field, the more space-time is curved. As a result, time flows at different rates depending on the strength of the gravitational field. In areas of stronger gravity, such as close to a massive celestial body like a planet or a star, time passes more slowly. This means that if you were to observe a clock in a strong gravitational field from a location with weaker gravity, you would see that clock ticking more slowly compared to your own. Velocity Time Dilation the second form of time dilation arises from Einstein's special theory of relativity, which deals with objects moving at significant fractions of the speed of light. According to special relativity, as an object's velocity approaches the speed of light, time for that object appears to pass more slowly relative to an observer at rest. Both gravitational and velocity time dilation have been experimentally confirmed. For example atomic clocks on fast-moving airplanes or satellites run slightly slower than clocks on Earth's surface, and clocks in stronger gravitational fields run slower than those in weaker fields. Time dilation becomes significant at speeds approaching the speed of light, approximately 299,792 km per second, or in strong gravitational fields. In essence, time dilation reveals that time is not an absolute concept but is relative and depends on the observer's motion and the strength of the gravitational field. This concept has profound implications for our understanding of the nature of time and space, especially in extreme conditions such as near black holes or at speeds close to that of light. Now, how does time dilation connect to absolute zero? We'll explore the relationship between temperature, motion, and the flow of time. As we approach absolute zero, particles almost come to a standstill. What does this mean for the ticking of the clock? Scientists have pondered whether time might reach a standstill at absolute zero. Could it be a point where the progression of time, as we perceive it, comes to a halt? The short answer is, not really. Absolute zero is an asymptotic state, meaning it's a theoretical endpoint that we can approach but never quite reach. Why? Well, there are quantum mechanical phenomena at play that intervene and might 
could prevent us from ever reaching this extreme temperature. Picture this, you're cooling a small collection of atoms to very cold temperatures. According to quantum mechanics, their wave functions start spreading out, and instead of discrete particles, you end up with an indivisible superparticle. This phenomenon is exemplified in einstein bose condensates, showcasing the weird and wonderful behavior of matter at ultra-low temperatures. Now, let's talk about some of the coldest naturally occurring things in our universe. The cosmic fireball radiation, lingering in all space, boasts a temperature of 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. Even at this extremely cold temperature, there are faint irregularities in the radiation, remnants of the vast collections of matter it has traversed to reach us. Venturing into our local universe, we encounter the Boomerang Nebula, a celestial wonder with a dark core at a temperature of only 1 degree above absolute zero. It's a chilling reminder of the frigid extremes that nature can manifest. Defining time and temperature. Now, let's tackle the relationship between time and temperature. We define time in terms of clocks, collections of matter that change their states. At absolute zero, the lack of thermal energy might suggest a cessation of motion, but that's not the whole picture. Temperature, as we understand it, is defined for collections of small things, like atoms or quanta of energy such as photons. Time and motion at absolute zero. Even at this theoretical endpoint, large collections of matter, like planets, would still be subject to gravitational forces, causing them to orbit stars and spin on their axes. In essence, a physical clock would still exist, and therefore, we would still have time, albeit in a context where the traditional thermal motion of particles is minimal. In conclusion, the idea that time stops at absolute zero is a bit more nuanced than it seems. As we explore the extremes of temperature and delve into the realms of quantum mechanics, we uncover a reality where time persists, albeit in a state that challenges our conventional understanding. If you found this exploration fascinating, give it a thumbs up, share it with your fellow explorers, and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe for more mind-expanding content, and until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep pushing the boundaries of what we know. See you in the next video.